Hello and welcome to this little Speluchipedia video. Um, I never dive into the ever-expanding universe of Sam Speluchi, my investigator of the paranormal, who's based here in an alternate version of my town of Lancaster. Um, but before I whitter on for a few minutes, um, please give me a quick like, give me a quick subscribe, that'd be absolutely fantastic. And don't forget, there's more details of everything I do over at aschambers.co.uk. Thank you very much. So, today, I want to have a chat about someone who's not appeared that much in um, my books, as it were, um, but is a real driving force for Sam, and that's his son, John. Um, John Adamson, to be correct. Now, for those of you who scratch your heads slightly, remember he is the son of Sam and Caroline Adamson. Um, Sam sort of... Um, I'm not going to say childhood sweet. I mean, let's face it, Sam was early 20s at the time. But, you know, they had this relationship when Sam went on placement at Caroline's father's parish when Sam was still thinking about wearing his collar backwards. Um, the proverbial hit the fan. And, you know, they, the relationship was discovered. Caroline had manipulated him. And 15 years later, she waltzed back into his life at the end of Casebook, beginning of Ghosts from the Past and said that her son, John, um, was being, I don't know, what's the best word to make, pulled into this cult by Malcolm Wallace. But as it progressed, it turned out that she was keeping one simple fact from Sam, that John was actually his son. Um, Sam obviously was not very happy about this fact. Uh, you know, it, it's all like it ruined everything between Caroline and Sam, which may or may not have been sort of like rekindling their relationship albeit one being manipulated by her like she did again in bloodline um you know it's like a few books later and wallace found out about this and he used it um ending up sending john beyond by using like the the unpronounceable words of asmodeus opened up a portal sent him through <clears throat> and sam now is burdened with that guilt that his son, who he had only just, you know, discovered he had, um, is stuck in this hell dimension and seemingly no way of getting him back. Um, we have various sorry, attempts by Sam to try and go beyond or try and work out how to go beyond, but the rules of beyond mean that he can't send himself. And then in Fury of the Fallen, which should be published by the time this video is out. Um, when he tries to ask Asherah to send him, she says, no, I'm, I'm not going to send you there. I can't send anybody there. I don't even think about trying to get anybody else to send you there because, you know, once those words are spoken, whoop, they'll probably get sucked away. So, you know, he is stuck there. But Sam is determined <clears throat> and that he is going to get his son back. And... He actually sees John um, beyond a couple of times at the time of making this video. Um, at the time of writing this video, uh, recording this video, I've literally an hour ago finished the first draft of Fury of the Fallen. And he sees John beyond once in Troubled Souls when he goes up to heaven and God shows him this image of John there. But also in the epilogue of Fury of the Fallen where the potency takes Sam beyond albeit sort of like not physically just sort of like you know showing him what's going on there <clears throat> and um he sees john there and is in this scene we see the real importance of sam's son he is sat in beyond with another lad a few years older than him and they are speaking and what they are speaking is the prophecies um now, the prophecies, so far we've had five. There's things like about when the dragons shall rise, um, when the Eternals unite, all that sort of thing. These are the things which um, Betty has spoken about and prophesied. Um, and more importantly, which Scorpion, the children of, child of Cain, has prophesied. And we, we see the impact that it has on the people who are burdened with these prophecies. Um, Betty ends up being accused of being a witch, meets the sticky end. 
and by the time we reach um, Fury of the Fallen, we can see that it's really starting to take a toll on Scorpio. But we'll talk more about prophecies in another video because they, they are important. And we'll have a little unpick and uh, see what they might mean. Let's go back to John. So John is there beyond after having been sent by Malcolm Wallace with this other figure who we don't know as of yet. Well, obviously I know, but, you know, you guys don't. Uh, there might be a few breadcrumbs there. You might be able to work it out. And they are speaking these prophecies. These prophecies are echoing through time. And they are prophecies to do with the Eternals. They are prophecies to do with the dragons. They are prophecies to do with Kaenor. Um, so this makes John a very central character. And to a certain extent, his words are driving the universe towards the divergence. They are driving Sam, they are driving Lucifer, they are driving the children of Cain, they are driving everybody. Because the more people know about these prophecies, you know, the, the more clued up they're going to be on what's going to happen. And we know that one person knows the five which have been spoken so far, and that is Cainor. Um, because he tells um, Sam that in the case of the um, Dublin Dominion, when Sam is stuck in his Egyptian jail. Um, so, yeah, again, I'll say it again. John has this massive, massive impact on the universe. But where did he come from? I mean, I mean, obviously, we know physically where he came from the universe, you know, Sam and Caroline. But were there any sort of, like, influences I had for him? Um, I think, basically, if you look at him in... Um, the case of the Paranoid Podcast, when we first come across him in case book, he is, as I sort of say, a typical teenage boy. Um, for quite a few years, I worked as an invigilator at a local high school, which is sort of where I got the um, the ideas for uh, the school for St Edmunds and all the bearing characters in there. And, you know, you, you come across teenage lads and they really are a breed unto themselves. You, you start to see the real differences in characters. And, you know, one minute they're sort of like the big butch lads and the next minute they're running around pretending to be a duck. And I think I use a very similar sort of um, quote like that in the book. And it's very, very hard to not like them, even though they can be complete muppets. They'll do stupid things when the idiot gene kicks in around, so like 12. Um, but they are still quite fragile, even though they might not feel they are, or might not want to present themselves as such. Um, yeah, so, you know, we, I feel as a society, we're very much into like protecting the, the fragileness of the, the girls, as it were, you know, they're seen as the weaker sex and all that rubbish. But we ignore the fragility of teenage boys. We throw too much onto them at too young an age. You know, expected to man up, be a man, grow a pair, all that sort of poppycock. Um, and they're not just allowed to be themselves. They're not allowed to play. They're not allowed to be daft. They're not even allowed to make mistakes. And let's face it, we've all made mistakes. So when I was creating John, I was very mindful of this. So I wanted to create just a normal teenage boy. To a certain extent, very different to Alec's character. Because again, Alec is a teenage boy, but he isn't. He doesn't come across like a teenage boy. He has an older soul inside of him. Again, another video on that at a later point. Because um, that's definitely spoiler material. Um, so we have that comparison in so like Casebook Ghosts that sort of area where we have Alex sort of knows where things are at whereas John is just a lad and when he finds out that Sam is his father you know he's ecstatic and torn at the same time because his mother has lied to him but you know he's got this guy who he really looks up to and then it's all taken away which is heartbreaking and that leaves Sam a broken person you know he wants to get his son back he wants to put things right so not only is John driving things on a universal scale by being one of the sources of the prophecies and beyond he's driving things on a personal scale because he's driving Sam 
to do whatever he needs to to get his son back. The question is, how far will Sam go?